Hi, my name is Paulus Kirchhoff. I'm a cardiologist from Hamburg in Germany. And uh, I'm here together with Ulf Landmesser, the uh, PI of the Closure AF DZHK16 trial that will be presented at uh, the AHA Congress 2025 as one of the late breaking clinical trials. And we're going to discuss the trial here. And I'm really excited to have Ulf here. Hello, Ulf. Hello, Paulus. It's a great pleasure to present the trial at the American Heart Association meeting. And um, yes, uh, great to meet you. Brilliant. So Ulf, just to start off, why did you and the group of investigators that worked with you start Closure AF? What was the rationale in starting the trial? Yes, yeah, so in, we have, of course, as a major concern in patients with atrial fibrillation, the increased risk of stroke and mortality. And um, we uh, do know that there is a uh, part of the patient population that has difficulties with anticoagulation because of higher uh, bleeding risk. And uh, for these patients has actually been developed the procedure of left atrial appendix closure, which can be done catheter based and there are specific devices um, that are approved for this. Um, for um, And we in clinical practice, it's largely used for patients who have a high um, bleeding risk. However, mm -hmm. we felt there are not uh, enough data uh, to really know what is the impact on clinical outcomes uh, when we compare uh, this procedure, catheter-based left atrial appendix closure, to physician-directed best medical care, including also direct oral anticoag anticoagulants. And um, this was the background, so we wanted to um, know uh, the clinical outcome for both strategies in a specific population of patients with atrial fibrillation who have a high ischemic risk, but at the same time, a high um, bleeding risk. Excellent. And so how many patients were enrolled and how did the treatments actually look like in the trial? Yes, yeah, so uh, the trial was performed by the uh, German Cardiovascular Research Network in collaboration with the uh, atrial fibrillation network, uh, the AFNET. And um, we randomized 912 patients to either left atrial appendix closure or um, best medical care, including NOACs. Uh, in the left atrial appendix closure group, more than 90% uh, received left atrial appendix closure, largely by the approved uh, Watchman and Amulat device. And in the best medical care, physician-directed best medical care group, more than 85% of patients were treated with a um, DOAC. Um, and uh, patients were uh, followed up um, for a mean time of three years. And we looked for a primary uh, outcome of a combination of stroke, systemic embolism, major bleeding, or cardiovascular and unexplained deaths. Wow, excellent. So this is really the first large scale trial that compares left atrial appendage occluder to DOAC therapy, isn't it? In this patient population, yes, there has been uh, the option trial who looked uh, after the inpatients uh, who are undergoing uh, ablation for atrial fibrillation. Um, and compared to the option trial, our uh, population had a higher bleeding risk. You can measure this, for example, by the HESP-LED score that was on average three in closure AF and in the option trial was like 1.2. So we had a population with a higher bleeding risk. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit more about the patient population. What what was the approximate age, the transvask score? What were the common comorbidities? Yes, yeah, so it, it is indeed a in population of elderly patients. So um, on average, uh, close to eighty years. Um, so seventy nine years on on average, I think. And um, yes, patients uh, had a high bleeding risk, uh, either due to major bleeding that they had already, or due to um, high has blood score that was an average three and they had also at the same time a very high ischemic risk so they had a chest was score on average of uh, 5.2 um and um, should we talk about the results paulus now or yeah i think i mean this is i think this is what everyone is waiting for right so <laughs> okay if you find what did closure af show yes so the the hypothesis uh, was actually what well, what we wanted to know is whether this uh, strategy of casida based uh, left atrial appendix closure in this specific patient population with a high bleeding risk is um, non-inferior to, to best medical care 
or potentially superior because we thought um, that in a high bleeding risk population you might actually over time have uh, less uh, bleedings and um, that's why it's also important that the trial had a rather long uh, follow-up uh, period as well. The findings were um, somewhat surprising to us, I have to say, um, because uh, the trial did not, uh, the study did not reach non-inferity. So we have a, um, a non-inferity not reached uh, of left atrial appendix closure to uh, best medical care. And so that's why we, of course, couldn't test for superiority. And if you uh, then look at the data, you will find a higher rate of this combined endpoint of um, of um, stroke, systemic embolism, major bleeding, or cardiovascular and unexplained death in the left atrial appendix closure group um, for this uh, combined endpoint. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. And what is your explanation for this unexpected finding now that you've looked at it for a few weeks already? Yes, um, so um, I think we are in an elderly uh, patient population with a very high bleeding risk and uh, these patients have a significant rate of paraprocedural um, events, in particular also paraprocedural major bleedings. Mm -hmm. It looks like uh, that also um, the period after the um, procedure there is um, a somewhat a higher uh, bleeding event. Mm -hmm. and. Um, then there was also, when you look at the um, events over time, there was also a trend uh, um, for um, somewhat numeric, more cardiovascular and unexplained deaths over time. Um, mm -hmm. I should not stress this too much because uh, this alone didn't reach significance and the study was not powered uh, to look at this, but that is something that we didn't expect because in earlier uh, studies um, like Protect AF, for example, and there was rather a trend for lower mortality um, uh, when with um, left atrial appendix closure. So I think it's really the uh, not a single uh, uh, cause; it's a combination of facts that uh, resulted in not reaching non-inferiority. Okay, so you told us that there were numerically slightly more bleeding events in the. Uh, left atrial appendage occluder arm and numerically slightly more deaf. What about the thromboembolic events? Yes, so um, the um, overall stroke rate was uh, actually similar between the groups. There was uh, uh, numerically um, more uh, bleeding and numerically more cardiovascular deaths and uh, unexplained deaths uh, events uh, in the uh, left atrial appendix uh, group. And um, what you can see then also over time is that uh, there is more bleeding in the beginning with left atrial appendix closure. Um, mm -hmm. And then over time, it looks like there is a, a trend at least for less bleeding then. So um, I think one question that, that um, needs to be addressed is, uh, for, for the procedure is how you can lower um, this uh, need for antithrombotic therapy, because in, especially if you go in a high bleeding risk population, that's probably something uh, to consider, we had in the trial um, recommended uh, three months of double antiplatelet therapy, which is already uh, short, but still in this very high bleeding risk population, it's relevant for the patients. So that's something uh, we have to look at. And then you uh, probably there was also the um, interesting LEOS 3 trial that actually looked for surgical atrial appendix closure. And um, the uh, colleagues found that in a large trial, in addition to our anticoagulation, left atrial appendix occlusion uh, reduced the risk of stroke. So I'm wondering whether in very high risk patients, uh, one um, might need a combination of two approaches, for example, and that's currently tested in the uh, LEOS-4 study. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then um, in the if you go in the lower bleeding risk population, like we discussed in the beginning for the option study, um, that um, might also look different because you have not so many uh, early uh, bleeding events probably in these patients. So um, I think it's probably um, the, a question about defining which patient population depends uh, benefits from which approach and, and maybe also in very high risk patients. I'm very much looking forward to seeing results for a combined approach. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Ulf, and congratulations again for um, 
finishing what was what was definitely a demanding and difficult trial and I think a very important result for clinical care. Uh, and then one is, as you said, that uh, starts to trigger a process where we have to reposition the place of left atrial appendage occlusion in uh, clinical care. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paulus. Thank you.